Hello everyone. For years, large language models have been built on autoregressive foundation, generating tokens one word at a time. However, recently there's a new trend, diffusion large language models. For example, Google DeepMind has released the Gemini diffusion that is reportedly five times faster than the autoregressive version. Is it going to be a new trend? And why is diffusion language models faster? And how does it work? Hopefully after this video, you will find answers to all those questions. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. All right, let's dive into it. First, let's take a brief look on the differences. The core difference between autoregressive and diffusion model lies in how they generate text. Autoregressive models follow a strict linear path, basically next token prediction, while diffusion models works like a sculptor, refining a rough block of noise into a coherent final text. For autoregressive model, this is a visual explanation of how it works. It predicts the next word given past context one word at a time. Autoregressive models, like the GPT series, generate text token by token in a strict left to right sequence. Each new word is predicted based on the only words that came before it. This is enforced by a causal mask in the transformer architecture. I've gone through this in the transformer deep dive. The strength is it's highly efficient for generation due to KV caching, where previous computation are reused, so it's cheap. The weakness is it suffers from one directional bias, aka the reversal curse, where I will show an example later, and error accumulation, so an early mistake cannot be corrected. On the other hand, diffusion models, LADA is only one of them. It starts with a sequence of mask tokens like this, and then it refines the mask tokens over multiple steps, its non-causal transformer sees the entire context from left and right to predict all the mass tokens simultaneously, iteratively improving the whole sentence. So the strength is its holistic understanding and bidirectional reasoning, which overcomes the reversal curse. However, the weakness is its computational expensive per step, as it cannot use a KV cache, because KV cache depends on causal relationship and must reprocess the full sequence in each iteration. Of course, we engineers and researchers are dedicated to solve bottlenecks, so there are recent breakthroughs on solving this weakness. Before we move to the next section, let's take a look at the technical deep dive. This is the technical deep dive of the diffusion approach. At its core, the language diffusion model operates on two opposing processes, a fixed forward process to corrupt the data for training, and a learned reverse process to generate clean text from noise. So this is the same as the image diffusion. However, there are some differences you're going to see soon. In the forward process, which is the corruption process, this process progressively corrupts clean text x0 towards a fully masked state xt. Unlike the continuous diffusion, which adds Gaussian noise in the image diffusion case, diffusion LLM use a masking strategy and absorbing Markov process, a noise schedule, and this schedule can be cosine or some fancy other schedule like the image diffusion, defines gamma t. This is a ratio of tokens to be masked at time step t. The forward process q, xt given x0, is defined such that we can sample a noisy state directly from the clean data. So in short, we have this expression, q, xt given x0 equals to mask function x0 and gamma t, where mask function means that for each token in x0, it is independently replaced by a mask token with probability gamma t, or remains unchanged with the probability of 1 minus gamma t. The next is the reverse process. The goal is to reverse the corruption. The theoretical foundation of diffusion aims to learn the step-by-step -step transition p theta xt minus 1 given xt. Diffusion LLMs adopts a common simplification. The model is trained to predict the original data x0 directly from the noisy input xt and the time step t. The model is optimized using a standard cross-entropy loss, which serves as a simplified objective compared to the full variational lower bound. I've gone through all the details of diffusion in the diffusion deep dive. Let's do a quick review. All the information I'm sharing here is about image diffusion. However, it applies the same for language diffusion. So this is about the forward diffusion process. What we want to do is to corrupt the image or the text iteratively using a Markov chain. And, and each step depends only on the previous one. So Q xt given xt minus 1 is a normal distribution, depending on the schedule beta t. And there's a clever trick here for noise sampling. 
We use the reparameterization trick along with the additional property of Gaussian distribution. Based on the above math, we can get qxt given x0 equals to this normal distribution. This means now we can sample xt directly from the original image or text x0 since all scheduling parameters are pre-calculated. And this is about the different schedulers. You can use a linear one or you can use a cosine one. Now let's move on to reverse diffusion process. What we want to know is q x t minus 1 given x t, but it's intractable to compute. So our solution is to have a learned model to approximate this intractable true distribution. So although this q x t minus 1 given x t is intractable, the posterior condition on x0 is tractable, and this is the intuition. Now with a lot of mathematics, we finally have the reverse process. First, we predict the noise. Note that this is the whole noise for xt using the trained neural network. And then we calculate the mean, and then we sample xt minus 1. Note that we remove only a fracture of the whole noise, and this is the coefficient. So that's why we're saying the simplification is we predict the whole noise, and then we remove only a fraction of it. Next one is about loss function. This part is interesting. For tax diffusion, depending on the method you're using, you could have different loss function. If you're using continuous, then your loss function should be very similar to the image diffusion. If you're using discrete, then your loss function is slightly different. However, both of them are using similar mechanism, that is elbow or VLB, variational lower bound. The detailed deduction is right here. Take a look if you're interested. Now let's get back to the deep dive here. Since LADA is using mask language model, our loss function is a standard cross entropy loss instead of the simplified MSE where the image diffusion is using. In this loss function, theta represent all the states of the model and MT is the set of indices masked during the forward process at time t and the model predicts the probability that its generated token x0 hat i matches the original token x0 i at each mask position. There's a close connection between diffusion LM with BERT. The architecture used here is directly inherited from BERT. Both use a non-causal transformer, that is the bidirectional transformer, and are trained on mask language model. The key difference is the mission. BERT is designed to understand text and output representation in one pass, while the diffusion model uses the same architecture iteratively to generate tax from noise. Let's take a look at BERT and NLM. This is a comparison between BERT and decoder-based GPT. E1 to EN represent the embedding. TRM here is the transformer. And as you can see, for OpenAI's GPT or any decoder-based transformer architecture, you have the causal relationship. For the nth location, you can have all your previous tokens as input, but for the first position, your only input is E1. So you can only have your previous context, nothing on your right. However, for BERT and any bidirectional transformer, you have the context of any embeddings on your left, which is earlier, or on your right, that is later. With bidirectional transformer, we can use mask language model. For example, we have a text paragraph and we have a model that predicts the mask position. So we mask all the words and then we put it through BERT. So BERT can predict what is the token in the mask position. And then we compare it with the original mask words to calculate the loss function. All right, back to the DLLM. When we do inference to generate a new text, the model reverses the process from T to big T down to zero using a mask predict style. So it starts with pure noise, beginning with a sequence of mask tokens xt, and then we iterate and refine for t steps from big T down to one. First, we do prediction. The model should predict the full clean text x0 from the distribution p theta x0 given xt. Now with the full clean text, the next step is sample and remask. We sample new tokens from the predicted probabilities, but we don't keep all of them. We calculate the number of tokens k according to the schedule. We keep the k most confident predictions and remask the remaining ones. This means although we are predicting the whole full clean text at each step, we are only using part of it every time. This allows the model to correct its own mistake in subsequent iterations. 
and when we finally reach t equals to zero, all the mask tokens should be transformed to actual words. Now we have gone through the mask language model approach. Some people might ask, is there a way for us to use similar mechanism with the image diffusion? The answer is actually yes. One of the key challenge when we try to apply diffusion on text is diffusion was originally designed for continuous data, that is pixel space. However, for text is discrete. You cannot add a Gaussian noise to the word cat and get another valid word. This section explores the clever adaptations researchers have developed to solve this fundamental mismatch. There are three core strategies, and we have already gone through the discrete diffusion, mask and replace. This redefines diffusion to work directly in the discrete world of tokens. The corruption is defined by a Markov transition matrix rather than the Gaussian noise. In the forward process, we try to replace actual words with mask token iteratively until it's fully destroyed. And the reverse process tries to reverse it, bring back a fully masked sentence back to real words. The advantage is this is arguably the most successful approach for high quality text generation. However, it is extra work to define an efficient forward and reverse process that is different from the original image diffusion. Next is the diffusion in a continuous latent space. This approach converts discrete tags into a continuous space where standard diffusion can operate. The model learns to work with the word embeddings that is continuous like the image pixel space instead of the words themselves. So there are extra steps. We use a model like Word2Vect and map each discrete token into a continuous vector. And then we do the standard forward diffusion we apply Gaussian noise for each step, and the noise at each step is a function of the schedule. And then we do the denoise, that is the reverse process. We use a transformer to learn to take a noisy vector xt and predict the original clean vector x0. We finally have an extra step. The final denoise latent x0 hat must be mapped back to a discrete token, an actual word. This is typically formalized as finding the nearest embedding vector. The challenge for this is the final decoding step can be lossy and difficult to train since it involves rounding a continuous vector to a discrete token. This method was explored by Diffusion LM paper. There is a third hybrid approach, which is explored in the analog bits paper. It diffuses the continuous logit values or probability distribution that represent the model's confidence in each word. So it blurs the certainty of a token choice rather than the token itself. It represents a token choice as a continuous probability vector from a softmax layer. So you are no longer determined to be this token. Instead, you are a probability distribution of multiple vectors. And then we add Gaussian noise to these probabilities, blurring the model differences. This is the forward process. The denoise process, the reverse process, learns to take the blurred distribution and sharpen it back towards a confident one hot vector representing a single token. This can avoid hard rounding of a latent space model and can be more mathematically stable than pure discrete diffusion. However, the math is definitely more complex than the previous two. Now let's talk about the different loss functions for DLM. A model's loss function is its core training objective. The choice between a MSE, that is from the original image diffusion, and cross entropy, that is from the discrete tax diffusion, depends entirely on whether the model operates in a continuous or discrete space. The distinction is central to understanding how different text diffusion model learns. For LADA, which is discrete, it uses a cross entropy loss. Because it works with discrete tokens, the task is classification. At each step, it must predict the correct original token from the entire vocabulary for each mask position. And cross entropy loss is the standard for classification. It penalizes the model based on the log probability it assigned to the correct token. In other words, with cross entropy loss, we're trying to minimize the difference between predicted classification and the actual original classification. However, for continuous diffusion, for example, diffusion LM or analog bits, it's using MSE loss since it converts text to a continuous embedding and the task is regression. At each step, it must predict the continuous Gaussian noise that was added to the embedding. And MSE is ideal for regression. It measures the distance between the model's predicted noise vector and the actual noise vector, penalizing predictions that are far away in the continuous space. 
Now let's take a look at recent breakthroughs for diffusion LLM. We already talked about the vanilla diffusion models have a problem of not able to use KV cache, but recent breakthroughs are rapidly closing the efficiency gap. So cutting edge research is solving the expensive steps problem, turning the theoretical advantage of parallel generation into reality. The primary reason vanilla DLMs are slower during inference is their inability to use a KV cache, a critical optimization for autoregressive models. Autoregressive models generate one token at a time. For example, to predict token 100, the model processes the first 99 tokens. In this process, it computes internal state vectors, keys, and values for each of those 99 tokens. And when we use a KV cache to save these vectors, in order to predict the token 101, the model only needs to compute the keys and values for token 100 and append it to the cache, reusing the first 99. This makes each step after the first incredibly fast. However, vanilla diffusion LLMs can't use KV cache because there's no causal relationship. You're not only using your previous context. Diffusion LLMs refine the entire sentence at each step. The input for step T is completely different from the input for step T minus one since the whole input changes. So the key and value vectors from the previous steps are useless. The model must perform a full expensive forward pass over the entire sequence at every single step, making each step computationally intensive. Now let's talk about the breakthroughs. Those are included in research like FAST DLM. The first one is novel blockwise approximate KV cache. Although we can't use the exact KV cache like autoregressive, this new method reintroduced caching with a clever approximation. The model divides the input sequence into smaller blocks of tokens, and then for each block, we do change detection. At each denoising step, it identifies which blocks have changed significantly and which have not. So for blocks that remain stable or change only slightly, the model can reuse their previously computed KV vectors, avoiding a full expensive recomputation for the entire sequence. So this turned the previous few expensive steps into a few much cheaper steps. The next improvement is confidence over parallel decoding. This is a smarter sampling strategy that involves both speed and quality. Instead of replacing a fixed number of mass tokens at each step, this dynamic approach monitors the model's prediction confidence and decides to replace more tokens in a single step if the predictions are very highly confident. So this takes bigger jumps towards the final sentence and reduces the step needed. With all those breakthroughs, diffusion-based LLMs are actually faster than autoregressive right now. It's reported like for Mercury Coder, it's five to 10 times faster than traditional LLMs. And for Google DeepMind's Gemini Diffusion, it's also five times faster. Note that the LLMs are a newer development. Techniques that solve the bottleneck is still evolving. So this number might change soon. Before we end this talk, I want to briefly talk about reversal curse, which is a very interesting problem and one of the reasons we want to use diffusion compared with autoregressive. The reversal curse is a key failure of autoregressive models. If trained on A is B, they can't infer B is A. This is because they only learn in one direction. Bidirectional architectures like BERT solve this naturally. For example, models were trained on facts like George Washington was the first president of the United States. If you ask the model George Washington was, both autoregressive and diffusion can tell you he's the first president of the United States. However, if you want to do the reverse, the first president of the United States was, most likely autoregressive won't be able to tell you the answer. Bidirectional based model can tell you it's George Washington. So if you're using autoregressive model, most likely you have to feed in more data. Other than George Washington was the first president of the United States, you probably want to also feed in the first president of the United States was George Washington. For diffusion LLM, we don't have this problem because of the bidirectional transformer. All right, hope all those information are helpful. And now you have a high level understanding of how diffusion LLM works. Remember that this is a fast evolving space and things might change fast. If there are major breakthrough, I will do a follow up. Hope you like this talk. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe, comment and like. Thank you and bye.